Vectors for Physics, lecture number two. The geometric form, also called the polar form, of a two-dimensional vector that was covered in the first lecture is perhaps the most useful form for solutions of vector problems. However, it is not the best form for doing mathematical computations. We will now look at the component or Cartesian form for vectors. If you consider a vector on the Cartesian coordinate system with its tail at the origin and its head at some ordered pair, x and y, then the ordered pair describes a unique vector. Below is a picture of such, ve such a vector which can be described uniquely by the pair negative 3 comma 5 on the Cartesian coordinate system. Here's the point 3 and 5 and the tail uh, is always at the origin and that creates a unique vector with just one point. If you wanted to add a plus b where a equals negative 3 comma 5 and b equals 1 comma 4 then we are looking at the sum of the two vectors below. So we're going to add these two vectors. If we were to put b on top of a and draw, and draw the sum a plus b as we did in the first vector lecture, we'd get some idea of the solution, but we would not have a precise answer. However, with a component form, we just add the components, the two x's and the two y's, and we get a sum which is the unique vector a plus b. So all I have to do to add two vectors, here I have a plus b, which is negative 3 comma 5 plus 1 comma 4, is I just add the x's, negative 3 and 1, just like here, and the y's, 5 and 4, and I get a vector, and it's done. We have the vector. We just added them up. Also, if we wanted to subtract uh, a from b, there should be a little arrow on top there, by the way, we would simply write b minus a, 1 comma 4, minus negative 3 comma 5, and I'm going to subtract 3, negative 3 from 1, and I'm going to subtract 5 from 4. And when I do that, uh, I get um, 4 and negative 1. Uh, multiplying a vector by a scalar 6 would go like this. We simply multiply 6 times a and we get the ordered pair out here and you multiply each component. You multiply the x by 6 and the y by 6 and you get 6 comma 24 and we get a vector 6 times as long as a but going in the same direction as a and I should have put an arrow on top of a here and here. Okay. You're supposed to put arrows on top of these letters, otherwise it just uh, it just implies that we're looking at the length of the vector. Uh, multiplying a vector b by negative 1 would make b go in the opposite direction but preserve its length. So if I take negative b, it's like multiplying it by negative 1 and putting a negative sign in front of the ordered pair of b, negative 3 and 5, and you distribute the, um, uh, you know, you multiply those two out and you get 3 and negative 5. So that's uh, pretty simple. <clears throat> the problem we face here is that you will often be given vectors in polar form, not in component form. And your answers may be most useful to you when they're in polar form. This means we must be able to convert back and forth from uh, polar to component form. Fortunately, this is not too difficult to do, as we shall see in Lecture 3. I should mention here that component form is by no means useless. It's great for computation, but also given, say, a vector, uh, a force vector in Newton's here, f equals negative 3 comma 5, acting on an object means that you have 3 Newtons of force uh, to the left and 5 Newtons of force upwards. However, what you don't have is the result in magnitude, length of the vector, or the direction, angle. To find this, you need to convert to polar form.